We are in Amman right now. It's about 5.30 in the morning. We just prayed Fajr. Um, and we're about to head out in a bit for Palestine. We always hear about Palestine and the help that they need, but it's really rare and really difficult for people to actually get in and get them the help that they need. Realize that this may be one of the only opportunities where we're actually able to help them. And so we need to make the most out of it, inshallah. But anyways, we need to get going. Our bus leaves in a bit. We're just making dua that we're actually able to cross the border and get in, inshallah. One of the very real risks of this trip was the possibility of getting turned back at the border. We knew going into it that it was going to be really, really hard for an entire group of influencers to get into the border for some charity work. And so we had to spin it off, right? We told them we're coming for tourism. We archived all of our posts regarding Palestine or Israel or any sort of fundraising. And to our fear, they were really suspicious and we got held up for about four or five hours. They took our director to the side and interrogated him with questions. But Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we were able to get through. They let us through after holding us up. And to my knowledge, we are the first and only group of influencers that have been able to get into Palestine for charity work. So this was huge. Oh my God, we made it, we made it, we made it. So probably the first thing that we all noticed um, when we were walking through Palestine for the first time is, is how beautiful the country really is. It genuinely isn't spoken about enough. I mean, I've been to multiple Arab countries, but Palestine by far has the richest history, the most hospital people, and just the most beautiful scenery. And of course, there's still the conflict and the danger and the families that need help, but that's all we talk about. I feel like we paint the country as a war zone sometimes where I made it a point to try and highlight the beauty of it. You had the supermarkets on the street selling fresh fruit. You had kids running around playing soccer in the streets and the rows of men lined up for Tarawih. All of these things just made Palestine such a beautiful experience. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. It's, it's so much more beautiful in person, man. The, the pictures do not do it justice. It's insane. I'm here with one of the brothers. This guy runs the community, mashallah. Shoes, Mak? Dawood. Dawood. He, he runs all the work that's done here. Dawood, how is life? How is life in Palestine and Aqsa? How is the difficulty for the people to live here? Of course, the attempts of the violence to destroy the city and to destroy the people of the city, except that the people of the city are still standing and are standing. So what he's saying guys, what he's saying so far is the people here, mashallah, they love living here. This is their land. They're passionate about it. Although they go through struggles, every day there are struggles. Every day there are obstacles. Every day someone is instigating them, trying to upset them. But even with all these struggles, they are not leaving this land. And mashallah, as you see in the back right now, it's taraweeh time. They're praying taraweeh, um, subhanallah. This is their home. If you look on the left, there's an Israeli home right there. If you look on the right, there's another Israeli home right there, and they are living amongst the people in Israel. No. As we know, the, there are people here that are in need, and these iftars provide them the ability to open their fast with their families. Every donation that you make is going to make a big difference, guys. It's going to feed somebody. And we're going to do a lot of great things with your donations with the help of the people of Palestine, inshallah. <laughs> Thank you.
So we are at the food packaging site right now. They brought us all the food and we are currently packing them into boxes and those boxes will go to families. As you guys can see, all of the food are essential non-perishable items. You have tomato paste, you have sugar, you have salt, you have flour, you have oil, pasta, macaroni, beans. All of these boxes will be going towards families in Palestine to help them with their suhood and their iftar. So you are getting the edge for feeding, for helping break the fast of families here. All the build up and we are finally here as you can see at El Quds and we are serving a flood for the families here in Palestine. The money, the donations, everything that you've sent, this is part of what it is going towards. It is a great, great cause. You're feeding people during Ramadan, feeding people that really do need to be fed as well, that some of them can't afford to have a thought with their families. So we are here sitting with Dawood, Malik, and Hassan. They've been hosting us while we're here and we've been asking them about just the situation in Palestine and the reality of it. And I wanted to ask Malik, um, why is it that we are unable to actually get into Gaza? We're here in Jerusalem near the Aqsa, but there's absolutely no access to Gaza at all. So Malik, why do you to enter Gaza? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Of course, Gaza is not allowed to enter Gaza. We are not allowed to enter Gaza, or 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 to لأنه غزة هي محاصرة من عام 2006 بقرار إسرائيلي تم محاصرة غزة وهي مغلقة. Whether you're Palestinian, you live here, you live in, in Al Quds, you came from the outside. At the end of the day, Gaza is restricted. There's restrictions all around Gaza. Entering and exiting is totally controlled by the Israelis. And um, if you do want to get in, you need a special permit. So and, and and that requires a lot of work. There has to be a reason. So that's the reason. There is really really is no reason. Uh, the Israelis control who enters, who exits, and unfortunately, whether you're from Palestine or outside of Palestine, it's very hard to enter Gaza. And then the other, the other question that we were wondering is a lot of a lot of Westerners have this idea of why can't Isra Israelis and, and Palestinians just live together in peace? This whole two-state solution. طبعا نحن ما ينفعش في هذه البلد لأنه هذه أرض محتلة هي أرض فلسطين هي أرض المسلمين للمسلمين جاء إليها اليهود من كل مكان في العالم من كل دول العالم محتلين احتلوا هذه الأرض احتلالا عنوة وبالتالي أنا أعيش مع محتل احتل أرضي وطرد شعبي هذا أمر مستحيل ليس هناك سلام مع وجود احتلال السلام يكون فقط مع انتهاء الاحتلال فعندما ينتهي هذا الاحتلال أكيد يكون هناك سلام لكن مع وجود الاحتلال المحتل لا يكون هناك سلام What he really said guys is imagine this imagine someone comes into your house and takes over your house and says sorry it's my house now and you are sitting there in your own house how would you feel? Can you really make peace with this person? Are you going to have this feeling of resentment feeling of injustice? That's what the Palestinian people feel they feel injustice every day because they have people who have come to their land, taken their land, taken their homes, taken their properties, taken their families, and now um, they have nothing to do. They have no other choice but to accept it. So it's a very difficult situation. And un unfortunately, until, what well, he said, until that, that uh, injustice is removed, until they are removed from, from you know, infiltrating people's homes, this will be very difficult to resolve, unfortunately. really appreciate it. So today is a pretty big day. We are going and visiting um, some of the Palestinian families who have children with different eye conditions. Some of them are cross-eyed. Um, and their eyes deteriorate over time if they don't get surgery for them. So with your guys' donations, we're able to get them that care that they need quickly before their eyes deteriorate more than, than they can handle.
this was definitely the most emotional part of the trip. I mean, seeing kids that are six, nine, ten years old have their childhood tainted because of something that they can't control. I mean, vision is such a core thing that we take for granted. And if anything were to happen to our eyesight, we would we would rush to, to fix it. These kids were cross-eyed, but it wasn't just their vision that was affected. They also got headaches. It was hard for them to study, which can affect their future education. And bullying there, unfortunately, is a very real thing as well. So now you have this kid who can barely see straight, who gets headaches, who has a hard time studying, and now has has self-confidence issues and isn't able to make friends because of this. One of the kids especially, um, Muhammad, uh, I was able to connect to quite a bit. I mean, we just, he was very shy and reserved at first, as they all were, because again, they have no self-confidence. They've been made fun of all their life. I was able to kind of break through that barrier a bit and get a smile out of him. And, and I finally, I finally saw I saw a kid again. I saw just, you know, a 10 year old boy who just wanted to have fun and play soccer. He didn't want to worry about about all this, about his future. And it was really heartbreaking, man. I mean, their surgery costs about $1,500 to restore their vision. And if it was any one of us, and it only costs us $1,500 to get our vision back, we wouldn't think twice. We would drop that money, or if it was for a family member. But subhanAllah, I mean, these parents, think of how desperate they are. Like, they love their children to death, but they can't afford to give their children the basic, basic need of, of vision. I mean, that's crazy. This is something that definitely pulled at our hearts a bit. But yeah, man, it was, it was, it was emotional for sure. SubhanAllah, the mother was saying that she was waiting, you know, 11, 12 years old, that's 11, 12 years for surgery. It's very expensive surgery. They don't have the money for it. And guys, you guys are here. You guys are here to be able to raise the money to provide aid for these two, SubhanAllah. After we leave today, we're going to be taking them to the hospital and they're going to get their surgeries and, and we're going to be able to treat them with your donations and support. So that's a beautiful thing. The mother's dua will be answered, inshallah, this week through your support. And Look at the condition of the houses, guys. So we're here at the clinic that they perform the eye surgeries in. Uh, we're meeting up with Muhammad, one of the boys that uh, we visited yesterday. He's going to get his consultation. And then we're also going to get to speak to the doctor who actually performs the surgeries and kind of just get a bit more insight on what it's like over here. So super excited, really big day. Let's get right to it. So without the glasses, you can see the alignment of the eye is going inward, okay? Mm. Once he wear the glasses, okay, the alignment of the eye is much better. This refractive error and the plus 10 that the child has, it doesn't only affect his vision, but also it affects the motility of the eye and the alignment of the eye. Such type of patient should go immediately to surgery. You have to intervene with surgery as soon as possible because if you didn't do the surgery, it will affect the, mat the, the, mat the maturation of the vision, the development of the vision. All the child come, come to the clinic here uh, complaining from the bullying. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. their, let's say their uh, colleagues, neighborhoods. Uh, kids don't just, understand. Yeah. They, they see uh, the kids with the cross eye. Yeah. And, and guys, uh, Arab culture, again, makes sense. It's, it's, it's a little bit tough. And so all the kids get bullied. And so keep in mind, guys, when you give them that surgery, you're saving that kid from years of trauma, years of bullying, you know, which will affect their confidence, affect their level of self esteem as they grow up, exactly. as they get older, then, you know, as they want to accomplish things, get married, all these things that they want to do. Yeah. So this is uh, this is it. My flight is in a couple hours, and uh, our time in Philistine comes to an end. I've been sitting. I've been sitting here starting. I've been sitting here starting to edit this YouTube video and just seeing all the clips again, all the videos of of the children that we met, of the families, uh, the state of their houses. The iftar is in, in Masjid al-Aqsa. Part of me still can't comprehend the fact that this actually happened. 
no no team has ever been able to come into Palestine and to provide aid for them. And man, subhanAllah. Honestly, I don't know what to say. Honestly, it's just been such a blessing for all of us that have been able to take part and, and a blessing to be able to donate. And you're probably like, what do you, what do you mean by it being a blessing to donate? H how many years have we been talking about this issue of Palestine, of the oppression that they go through, of the situation that they're living in? And now there's finally an opportunity for us to make a difference. I saw the situation that they're living in. I saw their living conditions and I saw how the aid, how the money that we provide for them, where it goes and how much it helps them. So it really is a difference that we're making in their lives. And to be totally honest with you guys, I don't think we'll ever get this opportunity again. I mean, when we when we were going into the border, they they got our social medias and we use the excuse of tourism, right? But now that they know that we, we went to fundraise, we'll probably never be able to enter Philistine again. Because uh, they know now, right? They know where why we're going in. So this is really a, a one and done sort of opportunity. One thing I will say, though, is that as sad as the situation seems, there's a lot of hope. People that we've met, they haven't given up, right? And they are very hopeful for the future and, and that Palestine will go back to being a free country. But I don't wanna drag on for too long. The last thing I do wanna say is just really, really express gratitude for all of you guys. I always knew we had a community here. I didn't realize how big and impactful it was until this campaign. As I'm recording this video, 2,600 people, 2,600 people have donated uh, to this campaign, which is insane. It, it's it's mind blowing. I can't even comprehend that. And I'm I'm grateful to Allah that we've been able to build something like this. And I'm so so excited for the future because this isn't going to be the last campaign, the last country we visit. Right. If we can't go to Philistine again, we'll definitely be going to other countries and helping them over there. So I'm, I'm excited to see what we're all going to be able to do together in the future. And wallahi, I made dua for every single one of you guys that donated. You guys inspire me day in, day out. We still got a lot more days left in Ramadan. So let's see how much impact we can make in their lives, inshallah. Barakallah feekum. May Allah accept all your deeds during this month. Wassalamu alaikum.